Hey guys, I'm CMA Supra, and welcome to another War Thunder video, and I am flying the Bowfighter in a historical battle. Yeah, the plane that I rag on a lot for being terrible is the plane that I'm flying in a historical battle, and I'm actually going to do decently with it. Um, I don't actually rag on this plane too much, I rag on the rudder of this plane. The rudder is not very good. Um, that's really my biggest gripe with this plane. In all other aspects, this plane is great. It has great firepower, great turn time, uh, decent speed, uh, not too bad, but it's overall gr a good plane, it's just the rudder is terrible and makes it kind of hard to aim at times. So that is really the only thing I rag on, and I will once again rag on it in this video because it does hurt me in this video. Like it does in every video that I fly it, because it has the rudder that it has. Anyways, uh, there's a few topics I want to talk about in this video. First off is the Bowfighter, which I've pretty much already talked about. And second off is torpedoing, and third off is... I don't really know what else. I'll ramble for the third part. So torpedoing, as you can see, uh, when I was looking... Or as you can see at the top left corner of the screen, I have one torpedo. And that is because you can unlock the torpedo for the Bowfighter uh, 10, I believe. Mark 10? Is that the one I'm flying? It is the one I'm flying. Mark 10. MKX. So this is the one at rank 7, and it is a better version of the previous Bowfighter, because it has the same four cannons, but then it has four more machine guns. And I did make a mistake in one of my videos saying that the cannons on this Bowfighter were wing-mounted. That is not true. They are on the nose. The machine guns are on the wing. I am almost positive that is the case when I looked at it in the front. Um, it looked like the cannons were nose-mounted and the machine guns are wing-mounted, so that will actually come into play here. Uh, in fact, let me talk about that right now. So the fact that the cannons are on the nose and the machine guns are on the wings is actually a very good thing because when you're fighting against another plane, you do want as many of your cannon shells to hit as possible. And the way you do that is you either shoot at the broad side of the enemy plane, where they're either showing their whole top or their whole bottom to you, or you have all your cannons in a tight concentrated area, and then either they'll all hit or none of them will hit. And that is the case with the Bowfighter. They are all in a concentrated area called the nose of the plane. And as a result, they are very, very useful. And they even have lots of ammo. I believe it's over 1,100, maybe it's like 1,132 rounds, something like that. Uh, be between the four cannons, so... What 1,132? Let's go with 1,200. 1,200 divided by four is 300, so they're a little, a little under 300 rounds per uh, cannon, which is pretty good, considering that most planes at rank 7 have... Uh, or maybe this is a rank 6 plane. Oh gosh, I can't remember. This might be rank 6, but most planes at rank 6, 7, whatever this plane is, it, they don't have nearly that much ammo in their cannons. Um, yeah, like the Yak, both Yaks that you can get uh, have 120 rounds in the cannons, and that's actually at the high end. Um, I believe there's one plane, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I believe there's one plane that I do fly that has 200 rounds in the cannon, uh, but there's no other plane that matches the 300 rounds the Bowfighter has, so the Bowfighter has tons of rounds in the cannons, which is great and makes it great for shooting down enemy planes in a historical battle because you just have so much ammo. So moving on from the Bowfighter to torpedoing, as you can see, I do have a torpedo and I am going to use it to kill this destroyer. Now I did play this this particular historical battle multiple times, um, and every time I did try to shoot down the destroyer with a torpedo, which I guess would not really be shooting it down as much as just ramming it down with a an explosive object. Um, but I tried multiple times and every time I missed, this was the only game where I was able to actually hit the destroyer. And this is also the only game I played after watching the tutorial. So what happened was I played this mission twice and I failed to hit it both times. So then I went back and replayed the uh, t the torpedo tutorial. And then I played this game and I was finally able to hit it. And I actually didn't learn anything from the tutorial except that you're supposed to be between uh, 30 meters high and 100 meters high. So. Maybe I was just a little too high the previous times, and that's why I never hit the the destroyer. But I did hit it this time, so if you want to see how to torpedo something, there was your example. Be between 30 and 100 meters high, uh, be flat, or really have your nose slightly down, never nose up. Um, 
I guess that's really all the tips I have to give you. Obviously lead your target because the torpedoes are kind of slow compared to planes. Um, if you want any other tips, just go play the tutorial. The tutorial is nice and simple. So I have launched my torpedo. I did su successfully kill the destroyer and I am kind of heading back to base at this point, but the only reason is that I do have a plane chasing me and it's a Ki-61 and if you watch my videos or you have watched the past few you know that I like the Ki-61 a lot. <laughs> it is a very good plane. That's even the 1B, which is the favorite one that I, uh, favorite one of mine. My favorite one. There we go. That's how you say it. So what I was doing was I was drawing it away from his flak so I didn't get shot down by AAA because AAA in historical battles is pretty decent. It, it will shoot you down if you stick around too long. Um, but I was drawing him away and then I turned around on him so I could shoot him in a head-on because the bow fighter is weak, uh, that's a downside to it, but it has such a strong armament and the Ki-61 only has machine guns that I figure a head-on is the best way that I can shoot it down, shoot down the Ki-61 because it can outmaneuver me, it can outspeed me um, in certain circumstances. In this case it did, it did not outspeed me, but in some cases it can, so I figured the best way I can deal with it is head-on. And here I actually find out I'm facing two Ki-61s at the same time. Um, <laughs> there was one behind me, and then another one came from above me, so I was like, wow, there's two of them. I did not realize that. But there were two of them, and I shot down one of them, the one piloted by Zayo Cat zero one or something like that. So one air kill so far, and one torpedo kill, and it's not really worth going back to base for a torpedo because... Um, Oh, hello, Ki-61. It's another 1B. Uh, but it's not really worth going back to base for a torpedo because I'll spend the time going to base and I'll spend the time coming out here and then I may just end up getting shot down as soon as I get over here by AAA or by an enemy plane. So it's not really worth shooting... Or it's not really worth going back to base to get a torpedo. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't know where I was going with shooting. So... Instead, I'm going for enemy planes and ground targets, and as you can see, I do have a Ki-61 chasing me, and this is um, kind of scary, but at the same time, kind of not, because I do know he has a limited amount of ammo. I have way more ammo than he does. Um, he can chase me all he wants. He's going to run out of ammo. I mean, the Ki-61 is great and all, uh, but it only has a decent ammo load. It doesn't have a crazy high ammo load like the Bowfighter, so he did a lot of shooting at me, and then he just broke off. I assume he ran out of ammo. Either that, or he figured, well, I'm just wasting my ammo, I should just save it instead, uh, rather than trying to kill this guy. Um, I believe I was outspeeding him, but I'm not so sure about that, so don't, don't assume that I was, unless you go back and check the video like I am not doing, because I don't feel like doing it, and I'm too lazy, and I hate cuts and commentary. Cuts and commentary, by the way, just annoy me. This is totally on a tangent, but when people cut their commentary and do it in, like, um, 15 second pieces. I hate that. It's so annoying. I can hear every cut in it too, because they don't do a good job cutting it. I do a terrible job cutting it, but they don't do a good job either. At least all the people I listen to. It's just so annoying, so I try not to do it. Anyways, tangent over. I'm now going head-on against this Ki-61. Got some hits. Aircraft destroyed. That was just a lucky hit right there. Hit his fuel tank and he exploded pretty much. So that is the wonderfulness of these cannons that the Bowfighter has. I mean, he was shooting machine guns at me, he's not going to go really hitting my, um, <laughs> my fuel tank. However, the AAA on the Destroyer apparently can. That's Revenge of the Destroyer right there. Oh my gosh. I forgot that's how I died in this video, or this game. <laughs> oh, that annoyed me. That was so terrible. So I got two air kills, both in a head-on against a Ki-61, because that's the only way I can beat them in a bowfighter. And I got a torpedo kill on a destroyer, but then, in the end, a destroyer killed me with its AAA. And that is just so annoying. It's like one hit and boom, you're dead. You've exploded. You don't even get a warning hit like you do in arcade. It's just one hit and you are dead. At least in arcade, it gives you a warning where it hits you, but it doesn't do any damage. Um, not in historical battles or full real battles. Um, just hits you and boom, you are exploded. So, as you can see, I am currently following an enemy plane, and you might think I'm just wasting your time doing this, and you would actually be right. So, um, I actually thought I was wasting my own time in the game, so I went ahead and left and went to the scoreboard, and we can finally end the video and not waste your time by watching my teammate, who was doing nothing but landing. 
So, we already know what I ended up with. Two air kills, one ground kill, and I got 9,380 lions. So, it's not bad, but not great. I would have liked more, and I'm sure we would have gotten more if we had sticked around. Sticked around, that's not a word. Stuck around till the end of the game, and possibly gotten a battle reward, or whatever they're called. Where you get a random amount between 1,000, 5,000, or even nothing, actually. Um... If I'd stuck around for the end of it and possibly till we won or lost, who knows. But I got a decent number of lions, and I did decently in this game with the bowfighter. So while I may rag on the bowfighter's rudder, that's really the only downside that I rag on about the bowfighter. I don't really rag on its weaknesses. Um, its weakness, I mean. Uh, its fragility. Because uh, it's not too weak, it's just kinda weak. But anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and I will see you all in the next one, and hopefully you have more luck torpedoing than I did today, except for this one game where I actually got a torpedo kill. <laughs> Bye, guys. This Stuka is actually designed not to carry bombs, and the air brake has been removed, and instead it has been given twin 37mm cannons. Oh yes, 37mm cannons. These are awesome cannons.